When I'm connecting, the way that it works for me is that I ask for one soul to step forward, but I can't stop who comes through or who speaks. <laughs> that is and, and speaking and connecting. And also, yeah. when I'm connecting, there's also a child that passed as well. Where was the child that departed? Yes. Yeah. Is that your son that departed? Yes. Because he's also here. And this was a tragedy in the way that he had passed here in the physical world, because he's acknowledging that. And I felt that there was, before he had passed, first of all, there's a lot of things that I have to cover through all of this. So you're going to hear me talking quickly, but I want to get through as much information as I can to you. Okay. Because the first thing that your son is telling me is that he wants to let you know that there was no way that you could have saved him here in the physical world when I'm connecting with him. And he says to me, I need to apologize to my mother for not listening to her. He says, I have to apologize to my mother for putting myself in harm's way. Do you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> you would warn him again and again and again and again and again. He says, and my mother was my biggest protector. And he says to me, First of all, you need to know that you were the best mother that you could have possibly been to him. He says, you loved me, you cared for me. He says, but you need to stop beating yourself up. He says, because you beat yourself up again and again and again, and you look back on your life and you think, well, maybe if I did things differently, maybe my son would still be here. Yeah, I do that all the time. You need to stop doing that, please. Your son is begging me because he says to me, you deserve your life back because you were too good of a mother, he says, to ever have to suffer over me. He says, I'm the one that needed to change, not you. And that's what he's telling me. He says to me that the two of you used to get into full on fights here in this world. He also tells me at one time you had to, you asked him to leave the house or you pushed him out of the house. Do you understand that? Yeah. And listen, I know this is hard to talk about and I know that these are hard things, but your son is saying to me that I regret, he says, not listening and not paying attention. He says, because you gave me chance after chance after chance and you gave me opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. And your heart knows that. And your heart has to heal. But listen, you go over his passing all the time. And, you, and listen, when you say, oh my God, I should, have been, I should have been so hard on him. Oh my God, I shouldn't have done this. Oh, I should have just talked to him this way. Or I shouldn't have said this. Or I shouldn't have told that. Or maybe, if I, maybe me saying this caused him to do this. Listen, that's not your son talking to you. Those are not your thoughts. That is not guilt. That is grief. Yeah. And, your son is coming through to alleviate. He says, I never want you to think about that again, ever. Okay. But the reason why you're grieving is because of this reason. It's because you knew your son better than anybody else. You knew what he was going to do, what he was going to say, where he was going to go. You knew when he was lying. You knew when he was telling the truth. He <laughs> said to me, and when my mother wasn't sure, he said she would come after me. She would check with different people and you'd be fact checking. But he shows me you're like CNA, like you were like fact checking him all the time and being like, was my son here, here and here? Do you, did he tell you whatever? Do you remember that? And she used to tell on him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so know that your son is saying to me, listen, you need to let it go. He says, because the one who's also suffering is his sister, is you. Because he's telling me that he wants the two of you to be able to have happiness. And it's so hard because there's not a day that goes by when something happens in your daughter's life or happens within your family. And you think to yourself, oh my God, I wish my son was here for this. I wish he was a part of this. He says, I am there with you every single day. My other daughter, Bethany, is suffering really hard with this too. She, said, she has trouble letting it go. Well, I'm telling you, you might talk about your kids, but your son's tell me that you're having the hardest time because he tells me that it's been hard for you to even to want to celebrate holidays or to celebrate get togethers. He says, and my mother even debated putting up a Christmas tree or celebrating Christmas. And your son what? says to me, your son says to me, there's an ornament of his, or there's an ornament that you have on the tree, the memory of him. He says, yeah. I want you, he says, to still celebrate and enjoy life enjoy it with one another. And you have a question for me today. And your question is, is you want to know how he had died or what had happened that day? Yeah. And I'm going to answer that for you right now. Because your son is telling me when I'm connecting, first of all, he's taking responsibility for this when I'm connecting with him. Do you understand that? He says, and there's been many different stories over what happened and what had taken place or what had, what had gone on. But your son tells me that he was into the, under the influence at the time of his departure. And he says to me that there were substances and things that he had taken and things that he had done, and he's bringing this through. And at one point, I think, I don't know, because he's also telling me that, that his head was affected. So I don't know if he slipped and fell or if he hit his head. Do you understand that? And he this, fell off the train. He fell off a train. Yeah. He so, was... Uh... 
hopping trains and he was um, and he and I've always wondered if he was pushed or if he had fallen and that was the one question I wanted to know I will answer this question for you but you have to promise me not even me pro I want you to promise your son right here and now that you were gonna start living your life and you're gonna start be feeling happiness again because you said <laughs> before this reading if I find out how my son had passed and I get an answer then I will be able to let this go and letting yeah. go listen 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 to me Letting go does not mean that you let go of him. Letting go means that you let go of the hurt and the pain that you've been carrying because you're carrying this for way too long. Your son, your son says to me it was an accident. He says, I was having fun. He says, I was jumping the trains. He says, I was not pushed. He was not. Okay. He Thank you. He tells me he grew up playing on trains, that he grew up doing this. This was something that, that, that they used to do. He says, and he did not realize that this was going to, to kill him or that he would be affected in this way. But he says that he was doing things. He says, I was under the influence and I had passed. He said, oh. we found a bottle of vodka there <laughs> on, the, on the train with him and someone else. So that makes a lot of sense. Your son says to me, I made a mistake and I'm sorry. He says, but what I can let you know, he says, is that the moment that he passed, he did not feel a thing. He shows me the hitting of the head. And the next thing you know, he shows me him being in heaven and being fine. He says, I didn't feel anything. He says, so I want you to know that I'm here. And there's one other thing. Your son tells me that you're looking at his picture right now. It's right there. Yes. So, so that when you were glancing over, when we were doing this and you were saying, you know, come through, come through, and you were talking to him, he says, I heard you. He says, okay. so I want you to be able to heal. I want you to know that I love you. And I want you to know that I am at peace. Okay. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. You've <laughs> answered the two questions I had. Well, listen, I, I'm so glad that this helped you. And all I want is for you to know that, listen, you don't need me. You really don't. <laughs> you know, I deliver these messages from your loved ones. But look at how, this is what I love. Look at how, how I, I see Amber and Mary crying over there. They got the <laughs> tissues and everything. You got a little bit of the Tammy Faye, you got to wipe. But, <laughs> you know, this is why I love these events is because, you know, we can all feel the pain that we're all going through, but we can also heal at the yeah. same time. And know that one of the things that your son is saying, your son wants you to know that he loves you. He cares about you. He says, and it's okay for you to start living your life now. I have one question about the lamp. About it going on and off. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know if it was him. It's him. Okay. It's a touch lamp. I, I, every, when I'm really sad, I come home sometimes and I'll walk in my room and it's on and I always like to just think that maybe it's him. Oh, it absolutely is. And it's his way of saying, Mom, it's me. Mom, I'm here. Mom, I'm with you. So it goes on all the time. <laughs> Listen, I really hope that this helped you today. And I really hope that oh, this, this I, I really hope wonderful this is. Thank you so much for that. And I appreciate your gift. Thank you.